Hey everyone, welcome back. It's day six, I believe, of the grind to a thousand chess elo. Uh, before I start a game today, I want to just kind of make some observations about the things, uh, like common patterns I've been seeing in my games. Um, so the one thing that I've really noticed at this elo uh, that I'm playing at is that the the evaluation or sort of the the dominant player can swing at any point. And so um, this is a game that I was playing as white. I had a four point material advantage, and then I threw it all down the dumpster, as you can see here, if you're looking at the graph. So um, I was up five in the um, engine evaluation, and then I completely lost it in about one move. And um, what I saw here was the open diagonal on the king that would put uh, the king into check. And I, spoiler alert, blundered my queen. I wasn't really looking at all the potential uh, threats for this square. And so I just willy-nilly chucked my queen here, and then obviously the opponent recaptured. So I kind of figured the game was over at this point. I thought I just completely threw away any advantage that I had. So I recaptured his knight. And then obviously if you're looking at the graph, you can see that the opponent eventually throws away his advantage too. So I guess it's just kind of a reminder just to, especially at this elo, to just play the games out because you never know when the opponent might blunder as well. Um, and so what ended up happening was... We were in this position, there was a lot of pressure coming towards his king, which was pretty open out here on this side of the board. Um, but the opponent decided just to capture a free pawn and then go for the rook, um, which would have been pretty easy to defend. Um, and so I saw this opportunity for a check here, since uh, f6 was defended by the knight. So that's what I went ahead and did. And then this kind of put him into a check frenzy, where I ultimately recaptured his queen. Um, basically at the cost of one rook and so he gained a little bit of an advantage there and then towards the end of the game he just made one bad move with his king and i had um, checkmate there so even though i made a really bad mistake at the beginning i was able to still win the game after um, a lot of back and forth so it was a very wild game uh, this was another game where the opponent made a really bad mistake um, Basically kind of the same thing that I did in the last game, ironically. But uh, you can see here I'm playing as white. Um, the opponent had a six-point material advantage, and he was just slowly, slowly, slowly gaining an advantage the entire game. And then he just really made one move that cost him the entire game. So kind of same thing. He saw the opportunity for a check. Even though I had a really easy escape square here with the king, um, but he failed to notice that the knight was protecting a1 and so i went ahead and recaptured and then i basically had the advantage for the rest of the game um so i kind of have a theory that at this elo the best thing you can do to win games is just not blunder pieces um and i'm guilty of it all the time but i'm trying to get better at it so uh without wasting any more time i'll start a new game and see if i can follow my own advice find out I climbed back out of the 600s uh, yesterday. It's a bit demoralizing going back into the 600s, but we're back in the 700s, so we're roughly kind of back where we started again. Let's see, do we capture? I think I'll just go for the capture there. I'm not too worried about this. He can trade if he wants to. I'd rather develop. I notice players like to send their bishops just into enemy territory here. And um, it's a bit advantageous. It's just too, it's too easy to kick um, this piece here. I'll just go ahead and do that. I can move my knight on to b3. And he decides to trade. That's fine. Okay. I think I will go ahead and see. 
There's some options here. Probably should castle. I think I'll just keep developing. I'm not going to go for any funny attacks quite yet. There's a lot of pressure on my king side. I'm gonna see if he has any really weak pieces or undefended pieces. Seems like his knights are not in the best of spots. Uh, maybe I'll just go for. I wonder if this is a I'll just go for the early trade. We'll see if he captures with the knight. I probably won't take his knight on f6 there because then he can just retake with the queen. Okay, so that puts me in a better position, I believe. That was expected. So I don't want to attempt to trade bishops here because he can always just Push his pawn, although that would weaken his king. And that would put my queen in a decent spot, I think. He's, let's see, the b7 pawn is still the only piece that's really undefended at this point. I'll just see if he wants to go for the trade. I guess that put my pawns into a bad position, huh? Kind of created a couple pawn islands here. It's probably not the best now. He just has two pawn islands. Although this idea is pretty interesting. Could I'd rather go c3. I have to remember not to hang this bishop. On g4. Now my pawn's going to be hanging. Unfortunately. Oh, that coming. Now the bishop is hanging. I don't have a great way to... Well, no, it's not hanging. Sorry, obviously the pawn's protecting it. Never mind there. Never mind. Fake news. Let's attack his queen.
I have to watch out for Forks with his knight here. His knight's in a pretty good spot. I have a dark square bishop, and he's obviously protecting the dark squares here. I can't make too much traction. Maybe I just go for the rook trade or something. I suppose if I can get his rook out from a8, I can put my king on c8, and that would create the potential for um, for a checkmate. Mm, let's think about this. That might be a weird move. So capture, capture. Capture, capture. So I think he's going to come out ahead there. Well, no, let's think about this. Take. 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 One more time. Take. Take. Uh, take. Yeah, no. I'm not going to be in a great position there. And my queen's attacked here, so I have to be careful. Maybe this is the... ...idea. I have to play faster. I think my bishop's valuable here, so I don't... White want to just get rid of it yet. He does have check. So normally I'm really tempted to go on these side quests and just capture pieces that are not doing anything, but I want to try avoid doing that this time, if that's possible. Hmm. You know, it's a little bit crazy. Am I going to come up on head? The if this is an idea at all. Take, 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 and he captures. But then, yeah, I think this looks a little bit weird. But I'm willing to try it. I just have a feeling that my pieces are coordinated enough. So this forces him down here. This is check. He probably has to move here. Or he can recapture with. Queen. Yeah, so I just got out of harm's way there. At some point I need to get rid of his queen. Maybe I'll just start taking material. I'm really low on time. I have to play a lot faster. I think I'm making okay moves. I'm just playing slow. Probably shouldn't have blocked my bishop in there.
some point I need to free up a space for my king as well. See, so this is unprotected. I'll just protect. Oh, I just, I just lost. I just lost. Ugh. I just realized what I did. He has checkmate. He puts his queen on my back rank. I have to protect. He takes. Well. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. Talk about blunders, huh? I had a really similar game earlier. I am. Um, yeah, without even looking at the review, definitely blocking the bishop in here was a mistake. I think I should have just moved the bishop down to d6 so I could protect this pawn in case he wanted to take with the queen. That was a mistake. And then obviously moving the moving the rook off of the back rank was pretty bad. And then my king was trapped here. So let's see what the review has to say. It's a little bit frustrating. I Yeah. <laughs> so this is exactly what I was talking about. So I had a huge advantage and I threw it away. So... I think there I was just kind of starting to feel the time pressure because he had three times as much time as me. Um, yeah, this move didn't really feel very natural to me just to open this up. But I guess this was the play. I was kind of thinking that if I moved my um, rook onto d5 and then tried to capture on g5, I figured he would have tried to just protect this pawn with his king on uh, g6 or that with the pawn as well oh oh wow definitely didn't see that line well that was definitely the winning line yeah so here this is kind of interesting um there was an opportunity for a fork here which I totally ignored. Yeah, I think even if I was in this position, if I did move to d5, it wouldn't have felt natural for me to move to g5 because of the pawn threat. And I probably wouldn't have noticed this otherwise. But I do need to pay more attention to um, forks with the bishop, though. That seemed like the ultimate work. Yeah, I think I was playing better like positionally and I guess with tactics, but yeah, I just threw away my advantage there. So um, yeah, it's fine. I'm learning. Uh, I felt like that was a pretty good game. It was pretty fun. And this is a good lesson too. Not opening up the back rank when he has an obvious check here. Maybe another move would have been to move the king to f1. That was another possibility just to protect... Uh, the rook here on e1 oh, it was a fun game thanks everyone for watching and um see you in the next game